you know, we're like, Hey guys, uh, please welcome to the show, Corey Andrew Lent. He's a very uh, special guest. He recently hosted the end of slavery summit. Um, it was, it was an entire long, like multi-week long event with many special guests talking about ending slavery on the earth. And I, I received tremendous benefit from the speakers. And personally, I think you did a really great job with that, uh, Corey. So thanks for being on the show and introduce yourself and, and we'll get right into it. Thank you, man. Well, listen, I, like I said to you, I always wanted to meet you. And, um, you know, unfortunately, you came in on like the network and you all all this stuff uh, toward the end of the summit. I'm like, man, but that's OK, because we have a bunch of other projects that anybody can get involved with. And I encourage you to get involved with the future as well. Um, but I've seen a lot of your different videos and I like how you express yourself. I just want to say that's something that a lot of people should do is like you do music. Uh, <laughs> you do some comedy. I think that's good. You know what I mean? Like I, I some people are gonna be like, what is this going on? Like, I love it. <laughs> you know, I, I do the same thing. We all do like, we all dance on our own. We all do this stuff, but people don't usually record it. But, uh, you know, for people, I think some people might criticize you for that. I just want to say, who cares? Let them criticize you. I think it's fun that you express yourself. Um, but yeah, it's nice to meet you and, uh, we can always get more involved in the future. I encourage everybody to, we have a lot of great projects coming up, not just the summit. Well, thanks. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, everyone's got their own unique personality and things to offer. What One of my strategies as far as doing the one great work is to provide a variety of content other than just, you know, left brain philosophical stuff. And yeah. what I, I think there's a benefit there because like for the music, for example, uh, some people aren't wanting to listen to Mark Passio rant and, but they would <laughs> listen to me play metal music. Mm -hmm. And I've even started to sing a little bit and put some of those teachings into the song as well. So. Yeah. Yeah. And good. It's great to see that you're in the network. Welcome. Thanks uh, you know, there's a lot of great content creators there in the one great work network, uh, for those people who don't know about it. I mean, there's a lot of content creators and everybody's independent, you know, it's like a small team of people who are working on everything. And I met a lot of them in Philadelphia cause I'm from Pennsylvania and you know, it's like, these guys are not, they're not making a living off of doing this. They're doing this out of the care of their heart. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's nice well, I've, I've never received a single dollar doing this kind of work. So same here pretty <laughs> yeah. much. I, I don't even ask for it. So <laughs> It's a charity, basically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the knowledge is what is really the fruits, right? For people. Of course. And the connection and the network actually is a very yeah. valuable. Uh, oh, yeah, for own, sure. So. The purpose, you know, having a sense of like destiny and direction, which a lot of people in today's world is like, what do I do? Like, you know, what what makes this world better? Oh, the world is just going bad and there's nothing we can do. It's like, mm -hmm. that's not a great mindset to change the world, is it? <laughs> you know? Well Another great side effect of doing this kind of work is if people are willing to network in person to do, uh, you know, eco villages or something like that, they will have a, a past history of your online content that they can look through to get a feel for uh, what kind of person you are. And it's much better than just some random profile on Facebook messaging you saying that they want to be your friend or something. Yeah, that could be anyone. You literally have no idea who you're dealing with on the Internet. So, right. And there's a lot of content creators who've been doing this stuff a lot longer than you and I, you know, uh, people like James Corbett, Mark Passio, Larkin Rose. I mean, they've been doing this for years. They were some of the people who like they started out. They were one of the only per people speaking out about against the system in its totality, you know, not just left versus right, but looking at the nature of the system. And and now there's thousands and it's quadrupling every single year. And it's it's becoming massive because it's the value and the information doing it alone. That's a really good sign, I would say. I, yeah. I would say uh, all of the evil things going on uh, with the corona mind control thing uh, has really spurred a lot of people. Not everyone, but uh, a lot of people are starting to realize that this is actually a very bad situation and that something should be done about it. So, yeah. Yeah, for sure. There's a lot that could be done. I mean, I know that one of the things you want to talk about is uh, plant medicines. I mean, you know, this is something that I've seen even just looking at health and its relationship to freedom. How many doctors, how many medicine practitioners have started to look at freedom now because of what happened in the past couple of years? Like we're having a convergence of communities where there's people in the health field coming together with people in the freedom, you know, activist field. 
and and they're coming together and this is going to continue to happen i think you know you're going to have the philosopher crowd the people who study the philosophy the people who study spirituality everybody's going to sort of come together around this universal knowledge because of how applicable it is to everything yeah, again, that's a very good sign. It could actually signal a global kind of transition and awakening coming in because when you start to get people like that who are professionals in, in a you know intellectual field like medicine or even tech, those type of people, whenever they're assimilated into the natural law way of understanding the world, uh, they could be very valuable assets as far as building infrastructure or uh, software or, you know, alternative healing uh, organizations, for example. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I just I just think it's great. Personally, I like I like seeing it. So yeah, me too. Yeah. I mean, obviously, there's going to be some counter opposition being thrown in there. psyops, you know, Mark Pasha is one of his recent presentations is on psyops. I think it's a very interesting study because, you know, all it takes is for certain people to come together around one thing and really make that their religion, you know, say this is this is the only way to look at the world. And it's more easy to to infiltrate people who are so set in their ways and they're easy to figure out. But for you and I, I mean, we're expressive. Maybe, you know, we we tend to do a bunch of things. We talk about a bunch of things. We're hard to figure out sometimes, you know, like we got the long hair. We're crazy. We're called the hippies. Maybe they're gonna, that's what that's the label they use. But they can't control somebody who controls themselves, who has a self-sovereignty to the point where nobody understands it but themselves. Mm -hmm. And the only way they are actually going to control people like us who've broken out is through violence, is mm -hmm. through uh, coercion, punishment, uh, imprisonment, m uh, murder in many cases. That's the only tool that they really have left to throw at people who the soft mind control and all of the manipulations stop working on. So, But even that, then, the knowledge remains, right? Yeah. Like, we can speak the truth and like they can take us out. Knowledge, the truth still remains. Right. And, and, <laughs> and, and whenever they do that, a lot of people see that and people then I, I feel like some of them will be motivated to uh, stand up themselves and it'll just be like the dark occult people will be like trying to play that little kid's game where they're trying to hit the gophers with the mallet and more and more gophers just keep popping up. Every time they hit one, there's five more. So <laughs> that's a good analogy. No, it, yeah. it's true because violence doesn't solve anything. Like in today's world, we think violence solves everything, which is why a law, which is backed by violence, we say we need this law. We need that law. It's all backed by violence if you don't comply with that law. So people actually legitimately think that violence is necessary in certain scenarios. Certain mm -hmm. laws are necessary for certain scenarios, therefore justifying violence. And that's the same thing as like what you're saying here is like, oh, well, what if you use violence to get rid of this person? That will make everything better. It's like, will it? You know, it, or is it the ideas, the education, the populace as a whole, what their beliefs are? Because that determines the world outcome. So a Andrew Tate is a, the most recent example of this. Uh, you know, I'm not I didn't watch all of his content or anything, but he's an example of somebody who had been teaching a lot of people things for a certain amount of time. And recently I feel, I feel like he was uh, just kind of taken out by the matrix or, or they're targeting him. Right. But everyone who he's, he's been talking to and teaching, you know, his way of understanding is going to see that and say, you know, he's even like directly called out the Illuminati or the matrix or whatever. And they're all going to see that and say, well, <laughs> So what should the rest of us do then if these people think they can just dominate and control uh, somebody who he might be a hero for certain people? You know what I mean? They're going to see that and say, you know, I think I think this whole masculinity and like not being able to be intimidated thing, there might be something to that that maybe more of us should come together and start doing so. Yeah, that situation is a whole mumbo jumbo mess, which is why it's they've caused so much controversy around it, because, I mean, you can even look at, I mean, again, to mention Mark Pastor, it's like these people have been talking about before Andrew Tate even came into the picture. He has a seminar on the unholy feminine, you know, the sacred feminine, the, the sacred masculine and these ideas of uh, the, the feminine and masculine and like the principle of gender for uh, the hermetic principles back, you know, in, in Egypt and, and those Kabbalion uh, ideas coming back. So it's it's interesting because all that is coming back to the surface because people see society has sort of just been 
uh, through a lot of turbulence. There was this idea of here's a tradition of the woman must do this, the male must do this, and then, oh, let's rebel against tradition, and then, oh, let's bring tradition back, and, oh, well, look at religion. Religion tells us to do something, and that gives us some sense of our tradition, and then, oh, let's look at morals, and so you're going to have a bunch of convergences happening. This is the nature of the modern world of mass information. Like, everything's going to be competing with each other, and things are going to start to rise to the top. So you're going to have people like Andrew Tate, who's very good at speaking, which is why he's very powerful, I'd say, in his ability, and and, you know, he even said there's there's an interview he did seven days before this event happened where he got arrested, where he said uh, in the interview, like, if they take me out, if they arrest me, I'm afraid they will because they know I have power to influence uh, people's minds. And that alone, you know, regardless of his actions, regardless of whatever, the fact that he has the ability to change people's minds could be a scary thing for people who want to keep their control over their populace, getting them thinking certain ways. So it's it's not, it's like you can have whatever opinion you want of Andrew Tate or Hitler or whatever of these guys. But if somebody is against the current system, <laughs> they're a dangerous person for the current system. <laughs> yeah. And these people are extremely desperate to keep control. Uh, they have a lot to lose. Who uh, they've they've built entire yeah. empires based on theft, mind control, deception, immorality, and they even get into very dark, uh, abusive kind of pedophilia and things like that. And so if if the, the population were to rise against them, they know that they would be facing justice. And for that reason, they might be, you know, similar to like an immature bully who is going around threatening everyone. Uh, that person's afraid of somebody more powerful than them putting them in their place. And, I, you know, I think this is like a perfect example of of that. So they, they seem to be getting more and more violent and extreme with their rhetoric and. Uh, these different psyops they're running. There's there's one going on in Australia now about some somebody who they're labeling a sovereign citizen, gun gun rights person. Uh, you know, and then they took they they that person actually got into a shootout with a with a couple cops. I don't know if you saw that, but uh, no, I haven't. But yeah, the system is basically taking that and saying, okay, we're locking things down even more and. Anyone with with t with a small amount of common sense or or just uh, ability to think for themselves can see what's really happening here. So uh, you know they'll get away with it for a certain amount of time, and I think it's really a hopeless endeavor that they're in. It's 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 bound to fail at some point, and it's just a matter of recruiting numbers and getting organization and stuff. So that more th these kind of injustices don't keep happening because every every day that people don't, you know, rise up and take responsibility, it's just uh, perpetuating a dangerous situation longer. And there there are a, a lot of casualties, uh, you know, and people who do get sucked into prisons and different things, uh, even worse than that. And really, if you're a, a good hearted individual with an understanding of things. You really just can't stand for that. It's 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 not anything that you would want in reality going on, uh, you know, on a soul level. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, there's, there's always going to be conflicts within culture and within the social fabric of society, especially, like I said, with the mass information at our fingertips. And somebody could just send a tweet and the next day it's like, you know, blown out of proportion and people are taking it a bunch of different ways. There's always going to be people looking to capitalize on different things like that. The difference is when you add politics to the equation, you start to add violence and saying, well, my will has to be imposed on yours. And then it makes the situation a whole lot worse because now you're using violence. So you violence. So now you're going to make people more extreme than they have to be. And the problem is with today is is extremeness, you know, people going to one extreme or another. And it's funny because people would call us extreme for questioning the world's narratives, for being anarchist or abolitionist, people who want to end these systems in their totality because we recognize its inherent immorality. But is it really extreme to have a moral position, just as it was extreme for the abolitionist to end slavery in the 1800s? I mean, you know, it, you can say it's extreme, but it's also something that most people recognize as wrong and they simply are living in. And you can ask these average people. Most people don't want to be giving their money to things they don't want to support. Most people don't want money to be stolen from others with the threat of violence. But 
people let it happen because other people are doing it or because it's always been done. And it's like, oh, well, this is the system of government. Oh, there's no way we can change it. So they make all these excuses for their own understandings of morality. They just disregard it, throw it under the rug and say, oh, well, maybe I have a family to feed. I have to follow orders. I have to go fight for the army. I have to bring these people to the concentration camps. I mean, this is the number one problem in the world. It's like, People know what is right and wrong. They just ig ignore it. <laughs> and if they don't know what's right and wrong, it's like they still have some sense of empathy or consciousness or conscience and, and they still ignore it. it. They're not even expressing themselves to begin with. You know, it's like it's always someone else's program because from the very minute they're born into this world, they're put into a school system. That school system indoctrinates them. And that school system tells them you have to do certain things. You have to stay in line. You have to follow authority. At no point in time is to say, well, authority is morality or truth itself. You need to constantly be looking for it, constantly ask questions. Oh, this is not the, the way history is. you got to ask questions. Was this the way history was? Why did history happen? But school doesn't really get kids thinking about that. <laughs> well, and with the government and uh, mainstream media, it's getting into a very coercive uh, energy that they're putting out. They're basically saying that we will tell you how to think and we will tell you how society will function and you must trust us with every message that we put out and if you don't we will physically punish you is is where they're going with things and but they're protected by law the thing is they're they're basically it's like the pharmaceutical empires and the agricultural agribusiness i mean they're they're in bed with the law like they they have tax exemptions they have all this legal stuff to say hey i can be on tv but you can't and if you want to go on TV, you have to make sure you get this license, that license, make sure you sign up here, sign up there and go on all these government websites and make sure you have all the money. It's like this is not a truly free market. This is not people being able to express themselves. This is clearly a monopoly where five you know, companies run all the media stations, hundreds and hundreds of media stations. It's like that doesn't seem right to me. So, yeah, of course, they're going to clear the steer the narrative because they have a clear agenda. Like everybody knows, yeah, CNN is pro left and then Fox News is pro right. And then it's like, oh, let's battle them against each other. And then, oh, you got some other guys who act like they're independent, act like they're unbiased, but they still don't question what's going on. And they're afraid to add in their own bias because news is supposed to stay unbiased. So it appeals to everybody and they can make up their own minds. But what about the point of like, should you express yourself? You still are a human being. Like we're making people into robots. It's like, let's read the script. Let's look pretty on camera. It's like, I'm not about that. You know, it's like, when's the point in time where humans just express themselves for who they are rather than always project and give these images. And then you wonder why kids are growing up in the world confused because on top of the indoctrination is all this normalcy, which they can't get themselves out of. And they don't know where to find themselves because they're always trapped in other selves other than themselves. Right. Uh, the Internet can help with that, but it's being flooded with, again, these mainstream influences and stuff. And they try yeah. to they try to marginalize anyone with an alternative viewpoint and discourage people from looking into that. Uh, but at the same time, it doesn't work on everyone. Uh, I started to snap out of it in my 20s and stuff, and I just got on Google and started Googling things. <laughs> And very rapidly came to a very profound understanding. And, you know, they, they want to try to shut all those doors on the Internet. But again, like the Internet's a giant place. I, I, I don't even think they could if they tried, to be honest. So especially when more and more people start to uh, do the great work and, you know, put out more and more information, for example, like, I don't know what they yeah. think. I don't know how they think this is really going to turn out. I don't I don't see it working in the long run in the long term well, myself. That's why they're censoring people. You're right. No, you made a really good point. It's like the Internet is 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 a very helpful tool. I may have mentioned a lot of bad things, but I want you to look at the key distinction between what you said and what I just said before that. When you said I researched, you are inputting into the device. You're inputting into the search engine. You are the one actively searching something and asking questions. You're putting in your humanity into that system. Most people, they say, oh, I have to get my news through this source. I have to do this. I Oh, if it's not from this source, it's untrustworthy. They go in with assumptions that are pre-built by the system so they can never escape the system. So internet is not going to be a freeing tool for them. It's going to be a continually enslaving yeah. tool for them. But yeah. if they free their mind and say, well, I can do anything with the internet. I can find anything I want and I can ask questions, questions that I never thought of before. I can find people with life experiences that I, you know, I never would have thought of. Like that 
allows your mind to expand a lot more, right? So it's it, again, it's like you said before, it's looking at the alternative. People don't look at alternative news unless they actually look for an alternative and and they find it because the alternative, by definition, is something that's not mainstream, something that's not put on show for everybody. So people are less likely to know about it. Therefore, people are less likely to have a program set as like, this is the media I must look at. But, you know, and I think people can inversely get very used to the alternative media and they and they see that as their mainstream media. And now they don't want to look at the mainstream media anymore. And it, it's like that becomes where it's dangerous, too, to some extent, because where, where, where's also the point in time where they look at themselves in their own environment, aside from Internet, aside from technology, because you can use Internet and technology to your benefit. But there's also you in the natural world. It's like, what what about the technology that is the book that's right here? I mean, this is a technology. It's just less advanced than the computer. You know, like we built our way up to the computer. How did we build up to that? You know? Well, there's also very more uh, natural and subtle energies like cannabis, uh, sativa, for example, that force you to just perceive differently. And that was one of, that was a big part of my awakening, honestly, was just the cannabis gets you on this different vibe and you start to be like, what, what is this? What's going on here? This isn't, it would just subtly tell you that this is something is, is kind of weird about this place. I don't know exactly yeah. what it is, but maybe I should try to figure it out, you know? And that for that reason, cannabis was illegal for like 50 years and stuff. And they did the same thing with the medicinal mushrooms. And, and a lot of people are that, that there's a lot more popularity with those kind of things nowadays. And again, yeah. it's just another potential catalyst for getting people to think outside the box a little bit and understand things a little deeper, you know, yes. not everyone's going to go there. There is a lot of alternative uh, cultures arising that are can't be considered mainstream anymore. And time will kind of tell uh, how well all these different cultures and flavors uh, can co-mingle together and how, how compatible they are and stuff. Yeah. But I, I feel like the mainstream culture is getting more and more into like an isolated kind of like a death cult almost. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it was huge for a long, long time. And they've still got a lot of global control over resources and people's minds and stuff. But they're starting to get light shining through the cracks here and there. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know. As, as one great workers, we can focus on building that light and focus on, you know, awakening people and then networking and building alternatives to the, the mainstream structures and stuff. So, yeah. And, and what you'll notice, too, and this is throughout history, is certain things start to reappear over and over again as if they were meant to be or destined for humankind. So like you're mentioning cannabis. Oh, it was banned for this amount of years, but it was used for so long before that. So what happened? It's like because humanity is meant to use certain things because they've always existed. And my natureosophy, I say, you know, what is natural is basically what has always existed. You can't take away what is nature. You can attempt to, you can try, but nature's always going to end up winning, you know, to put it short, to put it bluntly. And um, that's, that's what we see happening. And I think the problem too, is like, you can see this too, with the prohibition ending alcohol, and there's nothing wrong with temperance practicing like, oh, well, I'm not going to get myself drunk here and there. And I'm going to, you know, make sure I'm responsible with it. The problem is saying, well, you can't drink it at all. It's banned. And you got to make sure you're this and that, because what we see is it's actually worse in America where they have it banned and actually better in other countries where they don't have it banned. Oh, why is that? I, I thought banning alcohol was supposed to make the situation better, not worse. You ever think maybe more laws is more problems? Like because this is what happens. Um, what you see is like you fermentation, alcohol is a natural phenomenon. There's always gonna be people who did. I mean, gosh, I could get drunk off of vanilla extract if I really wanted to, right? But but like because it's mostly alcohol, but like uh, people put alcohol in mouthwashes and stuff like that. Like it's it's in everything, it's in bread. You make coffee, fermenting tea, fermenting chocolate, cheese, all fermented stuff. And some of the foods, by the way, that people love the most and some of the most healthy foods are fermented. Kombucha is like an old alcohol alternative, which is considered a health drink. I mean, you know, apple cider vinegar and all this stuff. So 
there's a lot of fermented things, which, you know, this goes into the idea of like, this is a healthy thing that was always done for tradition to tradition. But here's the government saying, oh, well, if it's at this percentage of alcohol, you can't do this. If you're this amount of inches from the curb, you're going to get a ticket. It's like, this is so arbitrary. If I go over to the next state, they say that's not illegal. If I go over to the next state, they say it's illegal. It's like, oh, here's the same plant. I go across the world. It's the same plant. It's illegal there, but it's not legal there. Like, what morality are these people using? What universal doctrine are these people using? They're just saying, hey, I want my opinion imposed upon everyone else. I think alcohol is bad. Therefore, I want everyone not to use alcohol. And it's like, what about <laughs> responsible usage? Like, can you take this thing out of existence? It's the same thing with guns. It's like once people learn how to create guns and it's clearly a mass production and there's a lot of need for it because people want self-defense, you can't just expect them to go away. And then the funny thing is you ask the people say, well, you want the guns taken away. Who's going to take the guns? The government. Oh, OK. Do you trust the government? No. Then why are you asking for them to get rid of the, <laughs> the guns? I mean, this is this is the thing. It's more so the contradictions in people's own heads that people have to sort of sort through. And that requires a consciousness to step back like you did, where you took these uh, different substances and they helped you see a lot more or you took in certain information they help you see a lot more. Another problem, though, with prohibition or like ending a certain thing through the use of law and violence is you cause an extreme scenario, which causes people want to uh, wanting to get the laws back on their side. Because once you ban something like cannabis for 50 years and then bring it back, everybody's going to be like, oh, my gosh, I love this thing. Let's get more of it. And then the industries are going to be like, let's start lacing it with a bunch of things. Let's start mixing with a bunch of things. Let's capitalize on this. And, and soon it turns into a market that could have been stable and steady over the course of time. But instead, because you had it illegal for so many years and now you just suddenly brought it back, you're going to have this huge market rush. And a bunch of people are going to start to say again, man, I hate this thing. Why is this back in our society? And this is what you see in today's societies. Like if you can't have a stable, long term understanding of the world, you're always going to have this circling, you know, rhythm of democide and death and disease because people never understand prevention. They're always looking at treatment. <laughs> Yeah, it's like an opposite reaction to uh, what the what the state did for so long is there's going to be some kind of reaction to that, you know, with the, the pro yeah, right. prohibition and it, it might not the reaction itself might not necessarily be healthy either. So this is why we look at natural law. It's like a law that has always existed long term, you know, nature, long term, God, long term. These ideas, hermetic principles, long term, they're not limited. They're not limited to one country. They're not limited to one time. And this not only allows us to expand our consciousness as a whole, it just allows us to not get stuck in dialectics, not get stuck in these cycles. And that is the goal if humanity wants to evolve and say we want a sustainable future or an optimal future. What that means is that you don't have these endless cycles of democide or these endless cycles of problems. Democide, for people who don't know, is the number one cause of unnatural death. But most people seem to disregard it or not really know what the actual source of it is, which is their own belief system called statism. You know, their belief in the government, in these authorities, as if somebody has some sort of natural authority over you. No, you wrote you own yourself. Really basic. You know, and then to expand upon that, they'll say, well, what would we do without government? And they start jumping to all these assumptions. If you agree with the fact that you own yourself, you don't need to ask all these other questions. Stick with the principle. This is why we go up on these uh, short term, you know, rants, these short term cycles, because we never stick with the principles we know. It's like the abolitionists were like, slavery is bad, end it now. I don't care what economic justifications you make. I don't care what personal opinions you make. I don't care what country in the world you are. It's bad, end it now. <laughs> that's that's literally their message, right? They didn't say anything but that, basically. And there some people were like, okay, I'm going to write a whole Bible as to why it's bad. But it's like, it's bad. <laughs> you know, so some of us are going to be like, we need to explain natural law in detail. We need to make sure we show every little principle and how it operates. It's like, you don't need to do that. All right. As it is, it's already so great. The people who don't want to see it, they're ignorant. That's the problem. The ignorance. Not so much that you have to explain it in detail for them. If they're ignorant, they don't care how much detail you're going to show them. <laughs> you have to get to their own mind and their own contradictions. Yeah, there's a lot of those people around. Uh, what I started to realize was that the, the police state and the, that kind of global mind control and violence 
it's not really there because of me and it's not really there for me at this point because I kind of started thinking clearly and I started choosing behaviors that are in alignment with natural law. And I dedicated myself to a good positive purpose, uh, you know, as a lifelong um, dedication to uh, helping people, uh, putting out truthful information and being a part of a positive change and stuff. And I feel like with all of this lockdown and the extreme violence coming from government and stuff, it's almost like uh, there's a large percentage of the population who unconsciously through the way that they thought and, and their behaviors and stuff to have kind of earned that uh, under natural law, they've kind of earned that kind of energy. And I started to realize, well, that's not actually me. So I don't deserve that. And so I don't I stopped worrying about it as much mm. myself yeah. because I'm just like, well, I'm just doing positive things. So I, I right. clearly that's not something I deserve. So, yeah, you know. well, think about how law operates. It's the idea of we need to change everybody else. Never do we ever qu ask question like, do I need to change myself? So it's there's nothing wrong with you looking at like, hey, I'm doing positive things. These people are doing negative things. I'm going to let them do their thing. I'm not going to war. I'm not going to like not say anything like you. You still are speaking up. You're still, you know, um, sharing your voice. That's important. Uh, that's that's important. But you don't want to change people because, you know, you can't really change people. People have to change themselves. Like ultimately, there has to be a level of personal transformation. So we can tend to focus on like, wow, these other people need to change. These people are so evil. But it's also like the best thing we can do. And the only thing we truly do know is ourselves. That's part of the whole reason why we want freedom. It's because there's are people out there who claim to know what other people are or claim to know what nature is. It's like no one human being can do that. You know, we can look at natural law and say we got all the laws of nature figured out, but we don't. Like we're still ever trying to find what those laws are and how these principles operate. The point is, is that we recognize them. We say they're above man and man's authority. And therefore, man trying to say what nature is, is the problem, you know? And so we don't want to be counterintuitive and say, well, we have natural law all figured out. We're using that as a means to say well, there's always more to strive for. And this is the reason why we can't fit in a box. There's a reason why we can't say man is the, the person to dictate over everything. So that's why in nature philosophy, like the my philosophy that I made based on nature, which is just another way of studying natural law, is just understanding the difference between natural authority and man-made authority. Natural authority has always existed, being that it's natural. And you know, man-made authority is just this the the man saying, Hey, I I have the right to decide what happens to you, to nature. I can do whatever I want. There's no consequences. You know, I could I can decide what the law is. I can be the law. I get to be the author of law, the authority. Author, author, authority. You know, so <laughs> Right. So we so we focus on ourself and uh, a lot of these other people like you're describing, some of them are willfully ignorant and uh, some of them, they've been poisoned and physically in many cases and their minds aren't even working, uh, you know, efficiently anymore. A lot of them, that doesn't mean they can't ever be helped, but until they begin the process of trying to uh, think differently or, or help themselves, you know. I just, there's nothing more that we can do other than offer the truth or, right. you know, healing medicines or something like that, offer a safe space. Here it is. <laughs> but also, you know, you, you have to have boundaries too, at some point, because some of these people, they can be kind of dangerous too. So yeah. it's about, there's a, there's a lot of balance going on, but you're right though. Uh, we, we don't claim to know everything, but we do claim to know a little bit. And it's almost like uh, math. You know, you have basic math, which could be in the natural law world, what, what Mark Passio is teaching. It's just, I mean, you don't have to use that much logic or common sense to really understand that. It, it would be similar to like second grade arithmetic or something. And there's infinitely more deeper things that you can go into after that. A lot of subtleties. Maybe there's like some more calculus, you know, fancy equations that a smarter person could come to understand. But uh, those basic building blocks, if it's so easy, um, if people could just start implementing that, the world would would change uh, to a much more harmonious kind of like paradise vibe very rapidly. Yeah. So some some of us 
have already assimilated that knowledge into ourselves, And not only that, but we're putting it back out more and more so. And it's kind of catalyzing a, a future where there will be a percentage of humanity that does uh, really, really well, um, while while some of the other people uh, are still suffering. So, yeah, and, and we, of course we want to reduce that suffering. But again, like like you said, we can't just like walk in everybody's lives and be like, okay, we're going to fix everything for you because they have to fix it themselves. Um, you made a lot of good points, but yeah, I I totally agree with you. There's there's a lot of work to always be done. But the thing is, is that we put it out on the table. And as we do have with the Internet, going back to what we talked about before, it is all on the table. It's up to you to input into the search engine whatever you want to find the information. And you can find it even throughout the censorship. There's ways of finding it. There's people who made alternative search engines. There's always there's people who are designing the second Internet, like a, a way to get Internet off of this current internet that you can power from like a smartphone, like an old BlackBerry. I mean, there's so much being done for people behind the scenes of people just saying, well, we need to come together and just make decentralized solutions. And that mm -hmm. is what freedom is, is tons of solutions, abundance. And so we're practicing that right now, which is something that we can do as individuals, although we may not be able to convince the world, is we can show them through our own actions uh, what solutions we can make. You know, Derek Bros, I think, is a good example of this, somebody who is very action oriented in the independent media compared to a lot of other independent media who just focuses on the news and what's currently going on and the symptoms. He's looking at, well, what solutions could we actually build? He's got freedomcells.org, right, where he I think it's dot org and not not net, but there were other ones that were trying to scam from his website on purpose because they knew it was getting traction. And uh, it's a place where a lot of people can come together and wherever they are and find like-minded individuals. It's just one way. It may not work for you. Or you may not find everybody in your town, but it's a way that you can find people um, and therefore build connections. And you know, I've built different connections I didn't expect to build just because I put the effort into it. I put in the input. You know, but yeah. a lot of people, they want to stay with what comes to them. Like, I'll just sit back and whatever comes to me, I'll just go with, you know, it's like, I agree with that if it's coming from nature, but likely it's coming from some program that man created, whether it's the TV or the school or the political authorities. And our message is really simple, Nathan, like we're not we're, we don't have to describe every principle of natural law. We just don't want people to be coerced. That's yeah. it. <laughs> and we don't want violence being seen as legitimate. Violence is never legitimate unless, of course, it's self-defense, but then it wouldn't be violence because it would be preventing, you know, violence by definition. So. It's it's very simple. I think this catalyst uh, will start to gain momentum when people actually see an on the ground alternative to what they've been used to uh, living in for their mm -hmm. whole lives. So uh, as an American, I was used to the Matrix cities, uh, you know, education and religious systems and government and stuff. Uh, and when you when you grow up in that, you're like, so there's a lot of people who just they're like, well, that's all there is. That's it should be this way, I guess. And whenever we can get together and then build, say, anarchists, like the equivalent of a, a corporation or business, but in an anarchist decentralized version of that, that's rebuilding the nation's infrastructure, uh, building housing, feeding people, you know, even even producing steel, taking natural resources and turning it into electronic devices. Yeah, you know the the dark occultists will have to work extra hard to censor people's internet to make sure that they never even are aware that that reality even exists, and it'll start to look more and more like North Korea or something, where the rest of the world kind of continues in this technological, you know, more enlightened way of doing things, and you've still got this area of the world called North Korea where people just aren't even aware that of what it's like outside of North Korea. And they're, they're in an abusive relationship with the authorities there and stuff. This kind mm -hmm. of uh, vibe differential could spread uh, across the world where you start to have places in America, for example, that are still locked down and still running a mind control program 
you know, as if that's normal and the government could even prevent them physically from uh, escaping their little 10 mile square radius and stuff around the city. And they could have walls around these cities and they could have a, a different version of the Internet in that desperate of an attempt to keep these people's minds in the box. And yeah. at the same time, if as soon as you are able to get outside of, the, of that little city, that little isolated kind of death cult, if you, you, there might be people stuck in there for a while that escape and then be like, well, I just wasn't even aware that people like this even existed, that there was a, a, a reality like this. I've been stuck in this like mind yeah. control torture chamber my whole life, and this this might continue mm -hmm. for a while. So, but well, we're seeing this right now with the information too, right? It's like people don't know natural law exists. Like there's this information that we talk about in our communities. Like people don't even know it exists yet. I think the knowledge itself is going to do a great deal of wonder. I mean, you made a lot of great points, but like, yeah, it's so true. And and it's like, if you have other countries, um, if let's say America, I'd say would free itself first because it has a bit more freedoms and it has the ability to self-defense. I think it's a pretty good candidate to free itself first, um, even because there's a lot going on. There's a lot of people who are very passionate about self-defense because it was part of um, its foundation. But it's also a little bit trickier because some people are attached to the idea of republics and democracies because, you know, that was something that's like, oh, they stole it from us. And this is the perfect form of government. And it tricks them into thinking that a relative amount of freedom um, a a more freedom is is freedom. And it's like, well, because it's a lesser form of slavery, it's less likely to be seen as slavery. It becomes more fooling, more deceiving. Um, so communism or these other forms might be more overt uh, forms of slavery. This one's a little bit more covert. So people are more likely to attach to it. You might have situations like that where people feel like, well, we still need some sort of authority using violence. Again, like once you add in violence and slavery, then it becomes government. Um, but what we're talking about is creating decentralized solutions. And when you say like, hey, what about building this program, and that program? There are people building that. I mean, like Patrick Smith, this enthrall has a voluntary virtue program where he like is trying to help feed the homeless. And not a lot of people know about this, but this is, you know, it, I think he said it's because it's against the law there in Texas to feed the homeless or something. So he's doing it on purpose. Uh, and it's like, it, it was it's crazy, but there's people already setting up systems. The problem is it's either people don't know about these systems because they're being censored or being pushed out or they don't have enough money to sustain themselves because they're being taxed by the government and the government has a monopoly on those products and services. You must use our post office because we're the only post office, the U.S. post office. You must use our army and our uh, police force, our centralized police as your source of protection, you know, and don't worry about your self, you know, defense. You know, we have all the guns. We have all the tanks. We have all the big guns. Don't worry. It's in our hands. You trust us, don't you? Oh, if you don't trust us, you can just vote for a politician. Yeah. OK, I'll vote with a bunch of other people for something that I can't directly fund myself or something I can't directly guarantee. It's like, there's so many ifs and buts and then processes and legalese and then millions of papers, which nobody has read. It's it's just a waste of time, waste of energy, and nobody likes it and no one's happy in it. Like It doesn't provide a source of health. It doesn't provide a source of freedom. All it provides is a source of confusion. And people can say, well, what if we just get rid of that? It's like, no, it doesn't work like that. If you legitimize any violence, violence is going to grow. You know, if you legitimize any slavery, slavery is going to continue. This is why, again, the abolitionist said end it, not limit it, not change it. And I th find it funny. It's in our Declaration of Independence. It says the people have the right to alter or abolish. Are these supposed to be one and the same? Because alter and abolish is not the same thing if you were to apply this to slavery. The, the abolitionists did not say, well, let's alter slavery. No, they said abolish it because it means to put it to an end. So I'm not sure if our founding fathers were insinuating like, well, you know, we can change it or we can get rid of it, you know, not saying it's the same thing, because obviously those are two separate things. Changing something is different from getting rid of it completely. They didn't know that what they built would be OK, because even George Washington himself was unsure. He's like, well, if you create a monopolized system of monetary, like a monetary system like the Federal Reserve, well, the country's gone. Like he basically predicted that. And then it happened like 100 years after. And voila here we are federal reserve and you have ron paul he's like we got to end the fed and then that caused the whole thing it, because they saw it coming like they knew that what they built was not perfect because they're human beings but yet uh, people are going to say our country was founded by god and we have natural rights it's like you contradict yourself almost everywhere 
what's a natural right and what is a man-made right? Please tell me, you know, and people can't even define those concepts, which is why, again, we look at principle, which is why, again, we look at this universal stuff. But Nathan, you're, you're right, because there's so many solutions. The problem is they're just being pushed out currently, and we can keep creating those systems. The point is knowledge has to come for foremost, education, which is why I created the Liberator too. because if we want to create systems, if we want to come together, that's all great. If we want to theorize about how the future is going to work, that's all great. But the education always leads the way. The mentality of the populace always leads the way into the future world. So the Liberator 2 News is my next project, which will focus on educating the public and oh. everybody can get involved. Oh, I'm really happy to hear that. That's cool. I, I like yeah. the name, the name too. So will it be similar to maybe like InfoWars, you know, but but your version of that or something? Yeah. So, I mean, InfoWars is obviously news-based and symptom-based. I'm very critical of them on purpose because if we want to innovate and change things, we have to really improve upon ourselves. I'm not against them. I think they, they helped a lot of people in questioning the world's narratives. OK, over time. But let's, how long has it been? 30 plus years. And how much money ha does he have? He has five, one billion dollars to pay in the court system. If I had that much that much money, I could do right. so much with it, I feel like, to, well, to educate the public. But the thing is, they focus on promoting candidates. I mean, he's promoting Trump, you know, like for the past few years, he, he right. was never promoting any candidate. And all of a sudden Trump comes in. Oh, he can get an interview. Oh, look, our fan base is growing. Oh, we got to sell our supplements. This right. is not the way we're going to change the world. So. Yes, I created my own sort of news organization, but it includes everybody. It has a way for people to share their activism, to share their events, and for people to directly get involved. Anybody, they don't have to sign a form or get confirmation. Like, no, they, anybody can contribute. It doesn't matter who you are. If the article pertains to certain subject matter that is universal and for all of humanity, that's it. It works. If it's about, you know, uh, ownership, equality, uh, you know, self-ownership in the sense I talk about with ownership, uh, natural law or natural medicine, any of these things, then you can write an article about. It. And I encourage people to do that. Like it doesn't have to be more than 100 words. I'll turn it into a video for people. I will transmit it across the world. This is the point. So the Liberator 2 is named off of the Liberator 1 from the 1800s. That was the, the newspaper that was considered like the most powerful abolitionist newspaper at the time to end slavery. And that was created by William Lloyd Garrison, who was considered a radical. You know, he was considered, oh, my gosh, look at this guy. He was he was blamed for burning down houses for all of this chaos. But yet he helped free slavery. And now he's considered an American hero. <laughs> it's like funny because he was also saying there is no authority above that of God. He says, God is my only authority. I have no allegiance to any government. And he said this many, many times. He says, the laws of God is the reason why we have to end slavery. Even Frederick Douglass said it too, because Frederick Douglass wouldn't even be have a voice if it wasn't for William Lloyd Garrison, who said, hey, join my efforts and you can, you know, start speaking out. And here you can come to abolitionist conferences. Like, the power of journalism and education is so powerful, it just hasn't been harnessed for its true potential. Most people use journalism now for just, oh, let's just report on the news. That's not education. Education is saying, what is what is it about ourselves that we need to change? What is it that we need to challenge so we can innovate and improve? So that's my mindset with this moving forward. Well, that's awesome. So uh, do you have like a strong web development team and uh, like funding or whatever it is that... No. <laughs> so, hey... Uh, I'm a web developer and I'm also a data scientist and I've, I've been coding for like 14 years mm -hmm. now. So anyone in the group, uh, I can, I can start chipping in a little bit here and there, you know, uh, I think a good model for corporations, quote unquote, corporations in the future is going to be the decentralized, non-authoritarian, non-authoritarian, uh, sort of spontaneous organization structure. Right. So, you know, I've got a lot of my time and energy split up between a lot of different projects and stuff, but I do have a pretty strong intention to start developing my web, my web development and different tech skills, you know, over time and in the future. So, uh, yeah, man, I, I could uh, assist a little bit here and there with that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the main thing that I want people to just get involved with is the education, right? I mean, I set up a very simple platform. Uh, I didn't want to make sure the code and all that would be too complicated. I wanted to have a very simple to where the point where anybody can contribute and it's simple, it's easy to be, be maintained and it's reoccurring. Like the summit I we did was fantastic. It occurred over like 16 days and had like three speakers each day and a bunch of resources. So I recommend people check it out. The End of Slavery Summit. Um, and that really gives a huge picture of all the information that we ever talk about, like on 
all my interviews, all my books, like everything's just in there. Um, so we can always refer people to that. But that's a one time like sort of event that's always just going to be there in the back burner. But this news can be, you know, forever. I mean, it could be reoccurring constantly and people can look forward to it and it can just only keep growing. And then you can have this summit to always refer back to if people want a huge compendium of knowledge. So that was like sort of my goal with this structure. Um, so, yeah, I will if I need like coding help and stuff like that, I'll reach out. But I just encourage generally that you just get involved with the education efforts because that's that's oh, the main point totally. of the project. Yeah, yeah. I, I totally get involved with that. But uh, so for take your example of the in slavery summit, that was a very, very powerful, transformative vibe that you put together with co-creators and, you know, just a limited amount of tech knowledge and funding and stuff. Yeah. And uh, if you if you were to take it to a more ex extreme good example, say all, a bunch of people came out of the matrix who had all these crazy tech skills, you know, like they used to work <laughs> at Facebook and they could see how terrible Facebook was. And they just are like, you know, but then they go and join the anarchist crowd and then they take those skills they learned from Facebook and then they build something unimaginably cool. Yeah. I mean, it, the sky's the limit as far as human progress. Uh, we just need to have the numbers and the uh, out of the box thinking and people coming together and stuff to uh, really pull it off and stuff. So this is, you know, exciting as far as a foundation for an alternative uh, society and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would just like to you know, contribute, you know, what I have to offer, but also help with the recruitment process and, yeah. uh, all the on the ground stuff too. I think my video cut out. So, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to get it, <laughs> so I'm good. trying to get it back up, but we got the audio. So that's yeah. kind of what matters here. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's all that matters. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a lot of plans. Um, it, I'm just one person, um, like really I'm, <laughs> For the summit, I was just one person. And if, if one person can do that, I think there's a lot of potential when a lot of people come together. And that's why I made these events and they're going to be continually collaborative uh, because the more collaborations we do, the more impact we make. That's sort of like my philosophy moving forward. And it's true. Like when I did the summit, I had a huge spike in viewer base and everything. And I'm not looking for the influence. I was actually like scared of it. I'm like, I don't want to get too influential. Um, I, but however, I did like the fact that, uh, the message was getting out to a lot more people. And so I can't deny that. Like that's, that's the main goal of doing what we do, right. Is to get the ideas out there. Yeah. So next time we have a meeting, um, I'm, I'm going to switch to, uh, that other software that you recommended. So this, this right. zoom is kind of <laughs> sketching me out a little bit. It's so. all good. <laughs> yep. It's all good, man. But, uh. Do you want to continue? Oh, yeah, we or... can continue as long as you want. Uh, it's up to you. I, I we're, think we're we, almost we... at the hour mark. Yeah. Why don't Why don't we just call it a, a night for tonight and then I'll okay. go ahead and upload it. And I mean, I've got some on the ground farming pro projects that I'm working on in my yard awesome. tonight. So, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to be pretty busy. But thanks for thanks yeah. for inviting me. And uh, yeah, I'll you be looking. Me, yeah. <laughs> I'll be looking forward to all your future projects and that liberator website and stuff. So, so definitely, you know, include me if you want, and then, uh, we'll just continue growing the vibe and stuff. And, uh, it's going to be a, yeah. a really good reality that we're building. And, um, I think more and more people are going to, uh, come into this understanding and it's, I, I can see a lot of momentum building personally. So, yeah, I agree. No, dude, keep in touch uh, for sure. And you don't have to ask for permission. Just just get involved, man. Reach out to me anytime to send me an article, send me whatever you got, uh, whatever you want to do. I'm always down. <laughs> awesome. If you ever need help with anything, also just let me know. I'm willing to help. Yeah, totally. I'll be in I'll be in this game for the long, long term, you know. Me so, too. Yeah. Of course. So yeah, I'm I mean, sure we'll see each I other again. It. <laughs> it's gonna be great. So <laughs> thank you, dude. All right. Well, well, take care, everyone, and uh, stay on the path to truth and everything. So, <laughs> yep. Truth, Corey love, and nature anarchy. Is the answer. Your uh, crystal spider, right? Yeah, <laughs> crystal spider on bit shoot. Uh, check out the end of slavery summit. There was a lot of really good content yeah. there. So. And the liberator .us is for the liberator project. Cool. Yeah, I'm gonna check it out myself. So we'll see you next time, Corey. Thank you. Thanks a lot.